Asters are flowers in the family Asteraceae and are an important component of the ground cover in Zurich longleaf communities. It's one of the largest flowering plant families with over 1,900 genera and 33,000 species. Asters are found in a wide variety of habitats in the longleaf ecosystem, from dry xeric sites to wet music sites. A noted feature of all asters is that their flowers are arranged in a head subtended by bracts. Asters provide a source of nectar and pollen for pollinators and are important host plants for many different caterpillars. Many species flower well into the fall, providing a valuable late season source of food. In fall, longleaf ground covers often dotted in yellow. One common species found in xeric sites is narrowleaf silkgrass or Pityopsis graminifolia. It stands at one to two feet in height and has alternately arranged hairy, silvery gray green leaves and yellow daisy-like flowers present from mid-spring through the fall. Silkgrass is a tough, drought-tolerant plant that prefers sunny openings in the forest. One of the most common and widespread groups of asters are the solidagos, or goldenrods, including one with anise or licorice scented leaves, anise scented goldenrod, or solidaga odora. Anise scented goldenrod has smooth, alternate leaves with yellow flower heads on the upper side of arching branches. The leaves of this plant can also be used to make a tea. A third yellow-flowered perennial or biennial species found on many xeric longleaf sites is cottony golden aster or Chrysopsis gossipina. The name Chrysopsis in Greek means gold appearing. The golden flowers bloom from late summer through fall and are a favorite among bees. A notable trait of this species is its pubescent or hairy leaves. Gossipina, in fact, means cotton in Latin. There are over 50 species of blazing stars native to North America, too. When they bloom, blazing stars are showstoppers. Shortleaf blazing star, or Liatris tenuifolia, is no exception. This perennial has long purple spikes of rayless flowers that appear in late summer through early fall and can reach four feet in height. This is also a species that thrives in dry pinelands. Blazing stars are well used by pollinators, including hummingbirds, flies, bees, moths, and butterflies. Narrowleaf or tall ironweed, Vernonia angustifolia, is another purple flowered species and nectar source. It's also occasionally found on roadsides or recently disturbed sites. Upright stems, two to four feet in height, emerge from a crown at the bottom of the plant and the blooms appear in the late summer through fall. Each small head has 10 to 30 disc flowers. Aside from the longleaf pine itself, native grasses may be the most important plant species to the sustainability of the longleaf ecosystem. The typically thin leaves of most grasses ignite readily and thus help to carry fire across the landscape. This is especially true of the native bunch grasses that have dense tufts of leaves. Grasses are particularly vital for carrying fire in young longleaf stands that are not yet dropping enough needles to do the job, and in longleaf stands with low densities of stems, like longleaf savannas, that may never drop enough needles to create a contiguous source of fuel. Native bunch grasses are also widely used as sources of escape, thermal, and nesting cover for many species, including the northern bobwhite, and some provide significant amounts of seed eaten by birds and small mammals. Native bunch grasses are well adapted to xeric longleaf habitat because of their ability to send down root systems as far as 8 to 10 feet to find adequate moisture. However, they are not restricted to dry sites and are found in moist and wet longleaf communities as well. In the fall line sand hills from North Carolina through South Carolina and Georgia, as well as other xeric habitats, the blue stem grasses, which include species in the genera Andropogon and Schizocerium, and three on grasses in the genus Aristida, are the dominant grasses. Among the blue stems, the most common and noticeable species are little blue stem, or Schizocerium scoparium, and split beard blue stem, or Andropogon ternarius. On sites that have had some history of soil disturbance, such as farming, broom sedge or Andropogon virginicus may be prevalent. 
The most dominant and recognizable of the threon grasses are Carolina wiregrass or Aristida stricta to the north and southern wiregrass Aristida burkeana to the south. In the driest of dry sites, sea beach needlegrass, or Aristida tuberculosa, may be an abundant three-on grass. Just one of the many other, less prominent genera of grasses that may be encountered are the Indian grasses, including the state grass of South Carolina, yellow Indian grass, or Sorgastrum nutans. Legumes are members of the Fabaceae family, one of the largest flowering plant families. They're abundant in the understory of longleaf forests, and most are perennials. Legumes are well adapted to living with frequent fire. After a fire, legumes are often the first herbaceous species to re-sprout and often bloom profusely following a burn. This characteristic may help attract pollinators, which is necessary since all legumes are insect pollinated. The pod-like fruit or legume, which splits open along the edges to reveal one or more seeds inside, is one of the most notable features of species in this family. The seeds are an important component of bobwhite quail and turkey diets and are eaten by small mammals and many seed-eating songbirds. The foliage, which for the most part is trifoliate or pinnately compound, is forage for white-tailed deer, gopher tortoises, rabbits, and pocket gophers. Many legumes also provide nesting cover for wildlife. Legumes are also beneficial as nitrogen fixers. Hairy Lespedeza, or Lespedeza hirta, is a tall legume that can reach up to six feet in height, which provides excellent cover for wildlife. It's known as Hairy Lespedeza because of the silvery hairs that cover the plant. Like many legumes, Hairy Lespedeza has trifoliate leaves. Whitish yellow flowers appear late in the summer and remain into the fall. The fruits are small, about a quarter of an inch, and flattened. The hairy or pink sandhill lupin, Lupinus villosus, is a short perennial species with clumped basal leaves. The pinkish purple flowers extend upward in a raceme, and each flower has a reddish spot. The flowers are well visited by pollinators. The seeds are used by many birds and small mammals, but can be toxic to humans if consumed. Lopins are the house plant for many Lepidoptera, including frosted elfin. One way to identify this species is by the dense silvery hairs on the fruit. Sensitive briar, Mimosa microphylla, is a trailing vine-like species most noticeable when in flower. The stems are thorny, but the flowers appear as soft pink pom-poms. This plant is known as sensitive briar because when the leaflets are touched, they fold up. The foliage of this plant is eaten by deer, wild turkey, and gopher tortoises. Goat's Rue, Tephrosia virginiana, has a clumping habit. The plant has silvery hairs, pinnately compound leaflets, and the flowers are a light, creamy pink. This is a longer flowering species blooming from spring to fall. The two-inch seed pods are slightly flattened, and the seeds are eaten by bobwhite quail, turkey, and many songbirds. Pine bear and tick trefoil, Desmodium strictum, is another pink flower legume that grows two to two and a half feet in height. Tick trefoils are often known as beggar ticks or lice because they stick to your clothes, which is how they get dispersed throughout the landscape. The large seeds are also a favorite food source of birds and small mammals. Most of the leaves on this plant are trifoliate. Tick trefoils also respond very well to frequent fires and disturbance. Twining snout bean, Rancogia tomentosa, is another perennial herb found in dry woodland forests. It has a taproot, and from that taproot, one to two foot green stems rise into the air. The leaves of this legume are also trifoliate, and the leaflets are ovate to elliptic with very sunken veins. Snout bean has yellow flowers, which are clustered on the plant. A similar snout bean is Rancosia reniformis, which has a twining habit and kidney bean-shaped leaves as well.